Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect and use a magnetic door contact switch with the quantum system. So let's get started. So this is the magnetic door contact switch. It's a pretty simple component. I found this one on Adafruit for under 10 bucks. Pretty cheap. They're great to use as well. It uses uh, two pins here, kind of like a push button. And then you're going to have one pin that's going to go into a GPIO terminal on the builder base. And then the other one is going to go into 3.3 volts or ground, depending if you're doing a pull up or a pull down circuit. If you don't know what either of those are, I suggest checking out the push button uh, how to electronics video I've done in the past. I'll link it in the video description below. This will help you understand how you want to build your circuit. For this circuit, I'm going to have it as pull up. So one pin is going to GPIO terminal, and then the other pin is going to go to ground. I want to do this because when the magnets are disconnected, the circuit's going to be pulling to the 3.3 volts out of the GP terminal. So it will be sending a signal when the magnets are disconnected. But when the magnets are put together, completes the circuit, it's going to go to ground. So this is not going to be a signal. Because I only want to know when the window or door is opened or closed. So that's pretty much it for the door contact. Let's go ahead and connect it to our builder base and do the rest of the setup on our Q server. So for our builder base, we're gonna take one pin and I'm gonna connect that to ground on our builder base. And then I'm gonna take the other pin and connect that to GP6 on our builder base. And there we go, it's our circuit. So let's go ahead and go to our Q server and do the rest of the setup. So now that we're on our Q server, let's go ahead and pair that builder base that we connected the door contact to. So go over to the clients tab, we're gonna go to the unpaired tab, and then go to actions, and then click pair. Now that your client's paired, go ahead and click the setup button, and then give your builder base a name. I'm going to name it door contact, and then just pick a location, and then click save. Now once that's done, let's go ahead and build our firmware file. Go to the firmware tab, and then select create new and then create a name for this firmware file. I'm going to name it door contact and then click create. Now we're going to add this door contact hardware to the firmware file. So click add hardware and then we're going to search for door contact. So select it and then give it a name. For this, I'm going to just pick a specific door just to make it a little bit more realistic. So we can say, I'll name this one front door and then click add hardware. So now let's configure the door contact. Click the drop down, and then for driver, we're going to select GPIO. You could also try out these different low energy options if you're trying to use the coin cell battery for the builder base. Um, but for this one, we got it plugged in, so we're going to do GPIO. For pin, I put it into GP6, so I'm going to select that one. For debounce, I'm going to select enabled. And then for pin mode, I'm going to select input pull up. Again, this is similar to a push button, so you have to figure out how you want to wire it up before you do this project as well as select the correct um, pin mode for the firmware. You can check out our video in the how-to electronics series on the push button as well as the documentation. I'll link those in the video description below. This will help you determine if you want to pull up or pull down circuit or if you want to do floating as well, that's up to you. But for this project, I want it to be that when the magnets are put together, it's going to be pulled low. So it's not going to send a signal to anything, but then once they're disconnected, then it's gonna pull high and send a signal out to whatever device I wanted to send a trigger to. So for this case, I'm gonna be selecting input pull up and then go ahead and click save. And then now I'm gonna to go to actions and then upload this to my door contact builder base. There we go, and then select upload. And now while this is uploading, let's go ahead and create our app. I'm gonna to go to apps here. I'm gonna click create new and then I'll name this one door contact. Then I'm gonna click create. Now, the first thing I wanna do is pull out that door contact hardware object. So I'm gonna search for that, bring it out. There we go. So to keep in mind, this door contact is a digital device. So it's only gonna send a signal between zero and one. So it's only used really as a trigger device. So for this project, I want it to be where if there's a door contact, I want it to give me the status of that door or window on our dashboard. So for this one, since we want this door contact to be the front door, I'm gonna change the object name to front door and then click Save Properties. And then I want this to give me the status if the door is opened or closed. So to do this, next object I need to bring out is a number compare object. 
So let's search for that. It's under the code section on the app builder. Go ahead and drag it out. And now we're gonna drag a line from our door contact object to number one on that number compare object. And then go ahead and click number one and set it to trigger and then save properties. So we set this to trigger. So that way we don't have to drag another line to the trigger port on the number compare object. It's just whenever this port receives data, that's gonna cause the trigger for the rest of the function. So once we do that, we're gonna click the number two port and we're gonna keep make sure this value is set to zero. We don't have to use this as a trigger. So go ahead and keep it there. And now next thing we want to do is basically tell a text interface object whether the door contact is open or closed. So in order to do this, we want to add in two static string objects. This first one here, we're gonna name it open. Make sure you click Save Properties. And then the second one, we're gonna name closed. And then click Save Properties. And now let's input our messages for each static string that we want it to send to the text interface object. So for this first one, go ahead and click the string port here and then type in our message. In this case, our message is gonna be open and then click Save Properties. And then for this one, we're gonna type in closed and then click Save Properties. Now we have to figure out which port is going to go to which static string. So in order to figure this out, what we know is this door contact is a digital object. So it's either gonna send a signal of zero or one. So that number the door contact is gonna give us is gonna be compared to the value of zero, which we put in number two. So if the door contact is sending out a value of zero, that means the door contact is put together. That means it's closed. When you're comparing it, the two values, zero and zero, they're gonna be equal. So we're gonna drag it from the equal port to the trigger port of the closed static string object. Next, we know if the door contact is sending a value of one, that means it's gonna be greater than the zero value. That is gonna be our opened message. So go ahead and drag that to the trigger port on the open static string. From there, let's go ahead and rearrange this a little bit. Now we want these messages to go to that text interface object. So let's go ahead and search for it. Here is a text interface object. Go ahead and drag both string ports from both objects into the end port on the interface text object. Now let's label the text interface object and we're gonna name this one front door just because we know this is gonna be the door contact for our hypothetical front door. And then we're also gonna label it front door as well. So go ahead and do that. Click Save Properties and this is our app. So you can always add more door contacts to this, um, more interface text objects. You can group them accordingly based on groups, tabs, and so forth. Um, it's entirely how you wanna build your project, but this is gonna be a simple demo. Go ahead and click Save App. We're gonna click Return to My Apps. Now we're gonna click this Play button for the app. Now let's map that door contact hardware object. We're gonna go and map it to the door contact Builder base with that hardware that we added to the firmware file that we labeled front door. So go ahead and select that and then click save and run. Now that our app is running, let's go ahead and click the dashboard, go to our door contact app. So we have our door contact here. You can see that on the dashboard when the magnets are separated from each other, the message says open. And then when I put the magnets together, it says closed, open, closed. And that's just one simple way. You can take this one step further too, where you can have it when the magnets are closed, it won't do anything, but then when it's open, it can trigger our Twilio service object and it can send you a specific message saying a door or a window is open. Um, so you can kind of turn this into a little security system for your home if you wanted to. The possibilities are pretty endless. So that's pretty much how you connect and use a magnetic door contact switch with the quantum system. Make sure you check out the links in the video description below for more information about the door contact switch, as well as how to connect it with our quantum system. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.